Broadcasting live from the School of Athens, this is Europe and the People Without History with Mr. Olson, everyone's favorite AP World History Review Service. So we're reaching the end of our curriculum here. Let's start with the last period the College Board has to offer, period 6. We're going to kick things off with uh, Key Concept 6.1, which says, Rapid advances in science and technology altered the understanding of the universe and the natural world and led to advances in communication transportation, industry, agriculture, and medicine. So go ahead and pause me and put that into your own words to make this a more effective experience. So here's what I came up with. Hopefully you got something similar. Technological advances improved communication, transportation, medicine, and how stuff is made. So let's kick this off by talking about Key Concept 6.1, Roman numeral 1, which says that researchers made rapid advances in science that spread throughout the world, assisted by the development of new technology. You'll come to find that period six is kind of like a catch-all. It's very, very vague because it's in very difficult to include the movements and developments in a world that now has over seven billion people. Um, so the key concepts are very, very vague, and therefore the questions are very, very vague. So knowing a ton of specifics isn't going to necessarily do you a lot of good. You want to learn basic uh, ideas and big developments. Okay, so if I don't talk about your favorite specific piece of information from the 20th century, well, then I apologize in advance. All right, so new modes of communication bust onto the scene in the 1900s. These include things like the radio, the telephone, the internet, and cell phones. Obviously, communication had been improved upon earlier, like the telegraph in the 1800s, but these ones really make uh, a much bigger difference because they cut the distance between people tremendously. Transportation does the same thing, reduces distance. Petroleum-based tra transportation is now the way of the world. Cars, ships, airplanes, all using fuel that is derived from oil and therefore makes people move a lot faster and they can get to a lot of different places. Additionally, you have advancements in agriculture as well. You get the so-called green revolution, which harkens back to AP Human Geo. Oh, the humanity. This is a movement in which agricultural yields are increased throughout the globe. Predominantly, however, this is done in the third or developing world where farmers had been practicing traditional means of growing crops up until the 1900s, whereas the Industrial Revolution changed the way that the Western world grew crops by adding chemicals and fertilizers in the 1800s. This concept and more aggressive fertilizers, chemicals, pesticides, genetically modified organisms are going to be applied throughout the world. So if you look at the screen here, you have a picture of far farmers in Southeast Asia growing sugarcane. So they're using pesticides to spray on it so the bugs don't get it. Bugs love to go after sugar cane, which is another uh, example of why you shouldn't eat it. Anyways, the Green Revolution is a huge topic in AP World. It comes up all the time, usually in the form of multiple choice or short answer questions, but I wouldn't put it past the College Board to ask you a question related to the Green Revolution on a DBQ or a long essay. You also see advancements in production. This is uh, epitomized by Henry Ford's mass production, especially implementing the assembly line production mechanism on the Model T. This is a new organizational form which really destroys worker autonomy because, man, you just become a cog in the machine, literally. There are also advancements and innovations made in medicine. You see um, the universalization of vaccines, which of course is now going away, which is why we're bringing back awesome diseases like measles, uh, whatever. You see antibiotics, which was uh, epitomized by Alexander Fleming and his discovery of penicillin. You see birth control, which will be a topic that we talk about later. But anyways, all these innovations in medicine lead to long, longer life expectancies. If we can rid the body of back, harmful bacteria and pathogens, well, people can live longer. We also see innovation in energy technology. The um, Like we said, said before, petroleum is used not only in tr transportation mechanisms, but it's also used uh, to power people's lives. Obviously, the light bulb busts on the scene in the 1880s, but now it's pretty much a mainstay um, throughout developed parts of the world, and you need power to light up those light, light bulbs. So petroleum is one way to pop power it. Um, clean, cleaner than coal, but definitely not the cleanest. You also have nuclear power, which is trendy, impressive, and also incredibly unsafe. Perhaps you've heard of the Chernobyl disaster that occurred in the Soviet Union in the 90s. 1980s. Anyways, there are questions regarding nu nuclear power. However, it is certainly one of the developments that indicates that we have a lot more people's needs to meet, and therefore a more powerful type of power must be 
prevented. All right, key concept 6.1, Roman numeral 2 says, during a period of unprecedented global population expansion, humans fundamentally change their interactions with the environment. So now we're trying, we're kind of synthesizing key concept 6.1, Roman num numeral 1, with medicine that allow for more people and food that allow for more people with those bad larger population is going to destroy the world. Okay, so increased population and especially consumption of all those people is destroying the environment. Deforestation, pictured here in the Brazilian Amazon. Desertification, pictured in the background of the screen um, in places where water is consumed, over-consumed, dried, dries up, and what was once arid land is no longer uh, able to sustain any sort of agriculture. You also th see through um, pollution, the uh, onset of global warming and cli climate change. Perhaps if you believe that thing, a college board believes that thing, so you should uh, at least take it into consideration. Um, it is a real thing, by the way. Don't don't let me uh, trick you. Um, and obviously, air air pollution has changed the the vital resources that people need to live, like oxygen. Okay, um, it's also destroyed. Uh, th this destroyed environment has led to a competition over resources. This is a epitomized. This is best exemplified by freshwater crises, especially in Africa. But um, lest you believe that it is only Africans that experience freshwater crisis, might I remind you that Flint, Michigan, which is in the grand old country of USA, had its own freshwater crisis. So this isn't just a thing that is uh, reserved for the developing world. Key concept 6.1, Roman numeral 3, disease, scientific innovation, and conflict led to demographic shifts. This is by far the strangest and most um, odd uh, key concept that I have here, key concept and ro Roman numeral I have to offer you. It basically says that disease killed people, scientific innovations led to more people, and conflict killed people. Don't know how we're going to tie all these together, but let's try. Okay, so diseases um, bust onto to the scene in the 20th century, and since there's more people available to uh, impact, diseases have an increased impact because uh, they have more, more uh, potential victims. So there are some diseases that persist. Malaria, tuberculosis, cholera, and as you can see by the map that's on the screen, malaria is, and these other two diseases disproportionately affect the developing world or poorer con countries. Obviously, this has to do with uh, health care options, uh, ways of life, pollution, and things like that. Uh, but it's, in, it's important to keep in mind that some of the older diseases that had been eradicated in the Western or developed world are still happening in other places, which just goes to show you the world is not an equal place. However, we get new diseases that bust onto the scene. Probably the least well-known is the influenza epidemic that takes the world by storm towards the end of World War One. It's largely the result of a new interconnected world. It's called the Spanish flu because that's where researchers think it, it originated, but it certainly took its toll on America, killing so many people that little kids had a game on the playground in which they sang a fun song. I had a little bird. His name was Enza. I opened the door and influenza. That's nice. A jump rope song to influenza. Anyways, Ebola and HIV AIDS that uh, begin on the continent of Africa quickly make their um, presence known in the rest of the world, especially HIV AIDS, affecting disproportionately the homosexual community of the world. All right, diseases also emerge as accompanying cha changing lifestyles. So there's diabetes on the rise, which is, of course, partially related to uh, poor di di diets that people are uh, consuming. Heart disease, also bad diet diet and la lack of exercise, and then Alzheimer's, which uh, disproportionately tar targets the elderly, which is, of course, one of the negative byproducts of longer life expectancies. But don't, don't get me wrong, longer life expectancies is good. Now, birth control, this is where it's going to get kind, kind of odd, birth control and contraception become more effective and more available, which allow women greater control over their fertility. It also does a little bit to stem the tide of uh, population growth. Stemming the tide of population growth, though, also big uh, contributor to that is the total war phenomenon that took us took the world by storm in the early nine, nine, 1900s. I don't think we need to review this as it's going to be a, a, a big to topic in the next video, but I do want to remind you that total war was participated in by democracies, too. So that means United States, England, France, they dropped firebombs, they dropped atomic bombs, 
they bombed Vietnam. As a little dis disclaimer here, this is the weirdest grouping of information ever. Thank you, College Board. Anyways, that is how you reach Nirvana. This is your Buddha, signing off.